the Caribbean generally looks a bit like this. Beautiful sunshine, blue skies, and it's just quite a nice Sunday. All of a sudden, from like 15 knots, it smashed up to 60. If we don't sink or destroy ourselves or get caught by pirates. The entire island had been out of fuel for three weeks. Normally I sit here quietly and Brenny does all the artist stuff. I think I'm finished. It's done. I can distract myself. There's no more procrastination. We need to actually jump in and clean our house. Last time on Red Seas, we sailed north from Grenada to Rond Island. We met some friends and tried to hike to a secret beach, but unfortunately we had to turn around when we couldn't find the trail. Instead, we paddled our way into a wall of cacti and followed the path through the jungle to one of the most perfect beaches we have seen in the Caribbean. We sat on a driftwood bench for a while and then found a coconut and a floating satellite tracker for tuna research. Now we're ready to continue our journey. We're heading on up from Ron today. We're sailing up to Karyaku. I am still a little bit sunburned from our hike that we did, so I'm covering up and trying to stay in the shade as much as possible. But it is actually turning out to be a really nice day sailing. There was a little bit of kind of big waves and gusty winds as we just came around the north end of Ron, but now everything's kind of settling out. Beautiful sunshine, blue skies, and it's just quite a nice Sunday. So of course, as with all things sailing, the wind isn't quite where we want it. So we're gonna do a quick tack, uh, kind of like two tacks. So if you do one tack, we'll get further east and then that means we can take it easy going west, north, northwest, something in that direction. Roughly towards Karaoke. Right now we're missing it by like, I don't know, 50 miles. So we should probably do that now. We're about 20 centimeters away from the center. That's you, that's good. On the whole, I like to think that Indy is quite a stable boat. We don't move around too much. We can get very lazy with not packing stuff away inside because it doesn't tend to fall off surfaces and things. But clearly she is not quite as stable as I thought because just as we did the tack there, we turned around. The seas are not that big. And uh, I just jumped up to the helm and I was like, oh, I can smell something really odd. Not electrical, not mechanical, no engine failure or anything serious to worry about, but I can smell flowers and herbs. And that's weird on a boat in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we kind of looked around for a couple of minutes thinking, hmm, am I going slightly mad? And then I looked inside to the galley and I noticed that our dish soap had fallen over and the lid was shut, but it was just leaking all over the counter. And so this, this smell of dish soap and whatever flowery scent they put in it was just uh, wafting through the boat and confusing me. So. It is all now cleared away. We are giving up on this tack, I think. We're not really making the angle we want to, so we're gonna turn back around, head north, and just see where we end up. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. There's basically the current was kind of, let's say helping us. The current was going from east to west and kind of north, which meant as we were heading to Karaku, we were getting pushed up, but we were getting pushed away at the same time. And then when we taxed, we basically decided to sail straight into the current. So despite that, we're trying to make the boat go fast. We're going at like three knots over ground, which is nothing. It's just nothing. So uh, yeah, fighting the current all day long to turn and then maybe get a better angle, it's just not worth it. We'll just go this way and we'll figure it out. For... That's a problem for future me.
It's so strange. We were just like gliding along so peacefully, having a, like a really blissful afternoon. And then all of a sudden, we've come under this slightly dark cloud. It's not massive, but the sea state has suddenly just changed and got all confused. There might be like two currents kind of combining here. And suddenly we're just like rocking and rolling all over the place again. It's really odd. But at least we're getting closer to Karyaku. I think we're gonna get away with it. There's been about four raindrops, but we're just starting to settle again now. We had only just shaken a reef out, so we really didn't wanna to have to go up and do some work of putting it all back in again. But uh, yeah, I think we're just about coming out the other side. And we made it at the end of the afternoon after a lot more tax than we were expecting, but we are finally here back in Tyrrell Bay in Karakoo, which is kind of where we started out two years ago. So. It feels really surreal being back. So we've been in Karyaku for a few days now and uh, things haven't quite gone to plan. We first arrived here and our fuel tanks were super low. Our gauges don't actually work, so we don't know how low, but low. Uh, and we thought, that's great. We'll come up to Karyaku, we'll fill our tanks full before we set off. Um, and when we arrived here, we found out that the fuel supply ship had never turned up and the island had been out of fuel. The entire island had been out of fuel for three weeks. So we kind of thought, oh, maybe we're going to have to sail up to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and fill up there or go back to Grenada again. Um, but before we could do anything, a massive storm rolled through. We've had three or four days of constant rain of 60 knot winds. It has been wild. But today, things are looking a little bit better. The sun has come back up so we can try and fill up our batteries again. We are dangerously low on power. Um, so first thing today, we're gonna go to the fuel dock. There has been a fuel supply ship came in during the storm. Uh, the next delay was that the truck that takes it from the dock around to the other parts of the island then had a crash, so they had to bring up a fuel lorry from Grenada. We're hoping that that's happened and that there is actually diesel at the fuel dock, but we're gonna go and find out. What's yours? Ian. Ian? Ian, yeah. All right. My your name? Brian. Brian? Yeah. All right, Brian. It wasn't ideal conditions to go over to the fuel dock this morning because there's still a lot of kind of wind gusts coming through after the remnants of that storm. But that is a huge job now ticked off. We have got diesel in the tanks, full all the way to the brim. We have got petrol in the dinghy and we also got a little bit of water just to top up our tanks because our batteries have been struggling so much. We were like, we might not be able to run the water maker tomorrow or today or whenever. So we've topped up a little bit with water and we also gave a rinse down to our port tank, which we still hadn't quite finished flushing out. So now we can drain all of the water in the port tank and start filling it again with our water maker once the solar picks back up again. And I think we found a creative use for getting rid of that kind of salty, slightly salty, slightly plasticky water. We're just filling up a bowl and using our tiny little camping washing machine in here. It's so cute. So some people have installed these down in their head or in a spare cabin. Uh, we've not got around to that, but it works quite well out on the transom. We just open the lid, throw some clothes in and fill it up with water from our tap here at the back. And uh, it really is as simple as just turning this little tiny knob. 
and a spinny plate at the bottom kind of oscillates the clothes around. So, you know, it's not like a household machine, but it's so much better than the bucket of water that we were using before and just kind of pummeling with our hands and watching the skin on our fingers kind of disintegrate. So yeah, cute little machine and I love it. And we're using up the water that we wouldn't want to drink. Win-win! Today we're going to motor around the corner to a slightly nicer bay and the next job is to jump in and we need to clean these holes because they are disgusting. And this is much more like it. We've got the beautiful water, we've got the sandy beach, the palm trees. It's still kind of like gray and cloudy, but I can distract myself. There's no more procrastination. We need to actually jump in and clean our holes. It's a good look. These are amazing. They're like, they're not designed for salt water at all, as you can tell. <laughs> Slightly baggy these days, but uh, yeah, I learned many a year ago that if I go snorkeling without covering my entire body then I will end up with some very very painful sunburn down the back of my legs and I won't be able to sit down for weeks so now I need to dress like this I've scraped with basic hard work and now Brainy is going to go and sponge and she's going to get everything soft that I missed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely helped like taking the tanks down means that you're not kind of constantly free diving and having these little uh, two handles to like hold ourselves in position on the hull. I mean it does a little bit to make it easier but it's still just crazy tiring. It's weird because like diving is so pleasurable and then you do this sort of thing it's like <laughs> why am I having to work so hard? Yeah. It's like, hey. This yeah. is not what it's supposed to be about. Underwater is supposed to be pretty and lovely. <laughs> I mean, it's nice because you feed all the fish as you're doing it. You, like, that's what the most... I don't know what are. they are. They were very bold, though. Very bold, but darky fish. <laughs> and they were coming in and eat everything that you scoop off the hulls. So, yeah, we're uh, helping. We're feeding them. So, there you go. But, and we're going to sail faster. That's the key. Exactly. We're going to probably get in about a knot and a half, I reckon. Yeah, it was quite dirty. Yeah, we probably should have started cleaning it. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's done. We are... Another task complete. Yay! So two years ago, we actually came to the same spot, give or take, and there is a bar on the shore just over there. And they hadn't started this at the time, but they have since started doing a cool thing where it's like cruisers turn up and they can paint a piece of driftwood and they're building a wall that takes over the whole of the, uh, the compound, if you like, or the bar area. We've seen pictures of it, it looks really cool, but we figured, hey, since we're here, we should finally get our chance to put Indioko's name, Red Seas, up on that wall forever. It's 
We get to choose our wood. Is that long enough to put India on it? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I like the shape of it. It's like a wave. We'll go with this one. There you go. Okay. So as you know, I'm the neat one out of the pair of us. So I've drawn out our sign and now I'm going to go around and do the neat outlines and then I'll let Ian do like a little bit near the edge to sort of fill in the big spaces where I can't do much, too much harm. Well, since I'm not allowed to paint anything because, well, I don't know how to, um, it's been quite good actually. Normally I sit here quietly and Benny does all the artist stuff, but a whole pile of cruisers just piled in and weirdly, we know most of them. We actually met some very nice new cruisers who've just started on an Amel about, well, I don't know, four months ago. But yeah, it's just so exciting because everyone's got their own stories to tell. And I, I was just saying actually, the thing I love about cruising is everyone gets together and it's not kind of one-upping each other. It's actually everyone telling stories of how everything went wrong and how funny it was, how they recovered one way or another. So it looks like it's going to be a long afternoon of many a conversation, many a drink. And if we're lucky, at least one sign painted in on the wall. But if I get involved, that'll just be a blackboard of mess. So let's see how we go. Either way, it's a very pretty sight. Okay. I think I'm finished. It's done. Not the neatest, because you know I'm a perfectionist, but I want to go stick it on the wall. I need to paint one. So we need to find a space. Hey, look, we can just put it over Kumas. <laughs> Boom! Sorry, Mandy and Joe, we're here now! <laughs> Get in here, son. Find a space. <laughs> As we're getting Indy ready for a longer passage, we need to tidy away everything on the boat that we just use at anchor. So luckily our paddle boards are inflatable. We can just take them down, roll them up and throw them into a cabin and that keeps our decks nice and clear. So the other day we were sitting at anchor and all of a sudden from like 15 knots, it smashed up to 60, 59, like 59, stupid amounts. And um, everything was doing pretty well on the boat, except I noticed that the little uh, bungee cord we normally have over the paddle board here, was just flapping around and it turned out that the, uh, the well was actually given up. So there should be a little hoop here and it just pinged off. So uh, yeah, we don't have really a way of storing these right now. And of course the nearest line in the middle of a storm is, I don't know, 90 feet long. <laughs> the purpose. It was, I was getting wet. I was not going to hang around. So <laughs> you make do with what you got. We're also going to take the brackets off because we were sailing one time flying the spinnaker and one of the clues or guys or one of the lines that comes off the spinnaker uh, came down the side and caught, caught underneath these brackets um, and got so tight that it was really difficult to get the line off again. We were sort of like turning into wind, turning away from the wind, trying to get some slack in the line so that we could push it down under the bracket. A little bit scary and not ideal. So to avoid that, we don't need the brackets on while we're, while we're sailing, so we're just going to take them off and get rid of them. We've basically spent like the last two years now, I think, give or take, in the Caribbean. We've been going from as far south as Trinidad. Yeah. That was lovely. And uh, all the way up to St. Thomas in USVI, which is like way up there. And um, yeah, we've kind of gone up and down everywhere in between, which all the time we're cutting across the wind. The wind comes from the east, across the Atlantic, cuts across us and keeps heading west. So we've been beating into the wind most of the time. It's been bouncy. It's been rather bouncy, yeah. So big move to turn west from here basically means we're downwind sailing. So it'll be behind us the whole time, which means it's a bit more comfortable, a bit easier to do longer passages. That's the hope. However. It means that it's kind of the one move. It's really difficult for us to change our minds and come back again. So by leaving the Caribbean, we're leaving the yeah. Caribbean. We won't get there and go, oh, we'll just nip back because we broke our other laptop or anything like that. Don't say that though, hear me. <laughs> so this is kind of our big goodbye to what we know, to what has become Too our right. home, to everything that is familiar now, and we're leaving it yeah. forever. It's weird because, so the Caribbean generally, 
looks a bit like this. You've yeah. got the white sandy beaches, the palm trees, the glorious sunshine all the time, and the bluish greeny water. It's beautiful. We don't know what we're going to get when we head west. <laughs> basically because we haven't done any good research. So, so we're going to head that way and we might be saying farewell to all of this beautiful picturesqueness and be able to show you something completely different. So yeah, it's all going to be kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to have to learn Spanish. Oh, that's going to go well. Yeah. Our French, you know, is up here. Well, yeah, our French is supreme, but uh, <laughs> our Spanish is pretty much limited to ¿Dónde está the shop? <laughs> and I don't think they know that translates Quite right. Or even if they do, we don't know the, uh, the response. So yeah, it's going to go really well. Maybe you should let us know all the key phrases if you speak Spanish. Oh, there we go. And we might, we might have to vet this because some of you might not speak Spanish and still put in things. <laughs> but if you speak Spanish, maybe give us some key phrases in the comments so that we can research. Yeah, we'll do and, our best. And maybe do a bit better than just looking blind and confused and pointing at things. <laughs> um, yeah. It's the unknown that we're here for, so that's, you know, that's it. part of the journey. That's the story. So I reckon it'll be next week we will set sail. You'll see that in next week's episode. Uh, I say next week. I reckon we're going to set sail tomorrow and you'll probably see that around next week. So um, hopefully, all going well. If we don't sink or destroy ourselves or get caught by pirates. That's the plan. That's always the plan. Don't get sink. Don't get sink. Don't sink or get caught by pirates. And I feel like that's winning if we can do that. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs>